Welcome everybody to Blender today number 77. We are not live this time, I'm recording it from Madrid in Spain, yes, if you remember the last episode I mentioned that I might go to Madrid, I have a, a project maybe, yes, I'm taking a few weeks off to, uh, to come here, it's only two more weeks uh, that I have left to, to work on this project, but I'm gonna come back to Amsterdam in the in the regular schedule. I have I can I can talk to you about a bit more about it uh, towards the end of the show. This let's uh, it's been two weeks without news, so let's get through them because actually even though the feature freeze for Blender 2.81 is over, uh, it's 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 uh, running now, so it's um, all the features that were added until the 13th of September that was like the, the the end of new features but new upgrades or like fixes or polishing of those features is allowed uh, and some interface changes that are not too big so document uh, people making documentation tutorials can start doing making them so okay let's get to it as soon as possible so I am uh, recording this from my laptop, so I only have one screen, of course, so you're gonna see all the behind the scenes because I'm doing it all in one place. I have here, I have my notes, I have the music in the background, by the way, if, uh, it's from Tahian, he's an amazing artist, you should check it out. I also have my <laughs> cue uh, for, the, for the music that I play, and I have Blender down here, but I also have the the code blog because the developers merge like uh, I think it's three branches at this moment at the moment of this blog post you can see it here it's written by Dalai Felinto he um, um, writes about the projects that made it like we already know the outliner improvements that make the outliner awesome the uh, cycles are EV uh, new nodes for um, improvements on the mapping nodes and textures and um, um, the vertex color and a bunch of new notes that we also covered in the past. There is the um, upcoming projects like for uh, OpenXR for the um, uh, for VR, and there is also the Bevel Custom Profiles um, branch, which, by the way, you can try uh, not only from Graphical, which we are used to from the Graphical website but also in the billboard in the regular billboard where you can get the blender updates there's now a link here to click and see the um, automatic building of branches some branches for example functions branch the bevel profiles and the fluid manta flow manta flow developer by the way is now working full time on a contract for one year at least at least at the Blender Animation Studio in Amsterdam. So he's working full time on physics for Blender. That's amazing news. So uh, yeah, great, great things coming up. Why is the bevel only for Linux though? Oh, that's sad for non Linux users. Um, maybe there's something there with the with the building uh, setup, maybe libraries. I'm not sure, I should ask the guys. There's also a, a bit of um, uh, information about what could come in the future, the cloud simulation and the, and the Intel Embry um, improvements for GPU. They are planned for 2.82 or later. Remember that for 2.81, only for any release in the new release cycle um, uh, scheme or schedule, there anything that is not fully ready for two, for the current release, 2.81 for example, it's gonna be moved to the next one. So it means that yes, we have to wait for some features, but when they arrive, they're gonna be more uh, ready, more prepared, more fixed, more more, uh, more steady and uh, stable for uh, for use in production. So all right, let's, let's get to it. So improvements. Uh, I've been building this list for the last two weeks, so I even already have <laughs> a few uh, things for the next episode, for, two, for episode 78, but I'm gonna only cover what I missed in these couple of weeks. There is already new improvements in uh, sculpting tools, but I'm gonna cover that in the next show. Now that I have this set up, it took me a while though. It, uh, did you recognize, by the way, the, the here? This thing, I brought it from Amsterdam, it's the flag, Amsterdam flag that I was using back in the... Also the microphone is the one that I was using uh, back when I started Blender today from my from my bedroom. <laughs> so okay, let's get to it. The, um, the file browser was added uh, already 
so like three weeks ago or more four weeks ago i think the um one of the things that was that were missing is uh, being able to customize the color of the uh, folders so the files they're all um, black and white they are um, monochrome but the folders now have an option under the preferences in um, themes user interface icon colors you can now customize which um, color these um, folders are going to show up in so if you are used to blue ones uh, there are some things that use blue ones uh, you can see it or if you want to see them in big now you can they're super sharp now i like them uh, also i don't know if you noticed but the file browser here opened in full screen there's now an, an, a setting in the preferences that you can tweak in uh, interface temporary windows and uh, in the editors panel here that you can choose where to um, open temporary windows such as f12 for rendering for example in um, this option in 2.80 used to be under the render menu and there was a, a, a this uh, drop down menu there now you can choose it from here so render in window or file browser um, you can choose full screen or new window. So full screen will be like the 2.80 or 2.7 way of working. And it's always full, sc full screen. Remember that it takes over the full screen. So when you, for example, if you're running a render in um, Cycles or EV, for example, so you're running Cycles and then you open a file. In it's going to open full screen. So when you go back, it's going to restart the render. But that's pretty annoying. Um, uh, well, for me at least, it was very, very annoying back when I was had my precious render settings there uh, or render samples um, saved. So you can choose new window, and which is the default, I think. And now it opens in a new window, which is far from ideal. Um, sometimes I also don't like new windows, but I don't see a, a uh, like a somewhere in between. Um, this is a new setting that was added and there's also a better naming when you're opening a file you will see that your drives here on especially on windows i don't know on, on linux because i don't have many volumes um volumes as in mounted partitions but on windows they should have better naming um, now like they should show not only like c or d but also the name of the the volume itself then the top bar window um here i don't i don't have it because i use my my personal settings i've been using for for the project i'm working on here I, for for a few days i use my laptop so now i have it more tuned to my liking i like that because i often only show things in the computer i don't get to use it that much uh, now i do and in my settings i don't have the top bar enabled but if you um uh, start from scratch or like your user preferences you reset to defaults you're gonna see the top bar now here so it's because there are many uh, settings that were moved or like settings that became a bit too important to have them hidden or uh, put into a um, menu down here on the side so for example remember a few weeks ago we uh, shown the uh, option to only move or transform the origins of the objects um, there is also the option to only change the patent uh, objects or children well that one now uh, are in the options um, drop the popover panel here they used to be here in snap or in the pivot point here under pivot point but they didn't really make a lot of sense under pivot point because uh, some of them, like in, in this case, like the moving only the parent or the children objects, that didn't really uh, belong there. So now they are here in the option popover. You can choose parents. It used to have a longer name. Now it says only parents, uh, locations and origin, which is the option that we remember that you can uh, edit the origin of the object instead of the whole object. So pretty nice. Um, what else? Oh, there's a new patch by a, by a developer from the community. So if you, if I open this, uh, you're going to see the amazing speed of internet here <laughs> on the place where I'm staying here. All right. So page up, page down, uh, scrolling in the menu. So um, Joe Peters 
I think it's the first patch or one of the first ones. Um, he made a patch where you can, in any menu, for example, in the context menu, you can do a page up or down, and it will go to the top or the bottom uh, item in the in the menu. You can also use home or end. So when you are using only your keyboard, it's pretty pretty handy. Next, the um, armature. Oh yeah, this is a small one i think for in terms of like ui um, some of you may ask like why even bother adding it or mentioning it for example if you have an armature and if you enter edit mode you're gonna see here on the side in the item you're gonna change the length of the bones so this sounds like hey that's just that's just so small why would you even bother like mentioning it well because this setting wasn't uh, available to the rna to like the regular um, system that blender has for showing properties in the interface or for adding drivers or for doing more complex python stuff now it is so basically the the setting went from like very internal um, hard-coded into a more generic way so you can uh, actually use it for your scripts for your drivers and so on and that is pretty much it for the user interface here actually you can see the list this is a pdf that i exported from my uh, it's a google doc that i maintain so all right let's continue oh this is a big one viewport per viewport collection visibility what does it mean in the 2.7 there used to be this um this lock icon in the header that would show you uh, that would allow you to have the um, layer that you were ha the object that you were active the layer uh, only for that viewport so you can have in your viewport uh, the camera with all the objects all the layers enabled and then have one viewport with only the layer for the characters or the environment and you could work much better but still have the um, the full scene in a different viewport well now you can do the same it's here for example if i have a collection for the cube and then i have a collection for the armature so i have these three collections right i has cube and armature so i can now from the viewport i can say in the view panel here i can go to the collections um, panel and disable the ones that i don't want this will change it overall in the whole uh, in all the viewports but you can also choose local collections and then disable the ones that you you don't want and the rest of the the viewports will stay sync so every other viewport will contain still all the collections except the one that you have here on local and this is for each one of them it's is per viewport so you can actually have even a different setup here and have only armatures everything or only the cube so it's pretty pretty powerful so this is not going to speed up much things it's just the visibility so uh, don't expect like major speed improvements because everything is still calculated it's just a visibility uh, setting remember that if you want things to not be calculated at all you have to disable either like disable the whole um collection or you ha you can also uh, click here on the display icon to uh, do a similar thing but remember that this setting gets linked uh, when you uh, link this collection to a different blend file or uh, not a pen but the linking this setting will go with it um, while this one is per view layer so these are this is the difference between these two settings I think I got that cover. Let's let's move on. There has been many improvements in uh, Grease Pencil, but um, I can. Um, I think I'm gonna go through them rather uh, fast. Simplify is an option that allows you to remove um, certain settings temporarily while you're working. For example, so if you have a character, let's see. So let's choose a different material. So we have. A gray let's make it slightly more more colored so i have this this bluish and then i can add a 
uh, modifier for tinting so I can make it slightly more colored. Well, this is a um, is an option that you can choose simplify under the crisp pencil settings here in the um, sub panel and you can disable layer tinting. So, oh, the layer tinting, sorry, I have the modifier. This is a setting here under display. Um, here, tint color, sorry, I had them completely mixed. So if I disable, there you go, layer tinting. So modifiers is the one that is going to disable all the modifiers. I got to mix them up. So if I dis remove this guy and then go to that here, the tinting for, oh, there you go. I had it off. Sorry. I'm a bit um, rusty with this, with this settings now okay so the layer tinting and the modifier layer tinting is a setting that you can uh, turn off to turn on to disable the layer tinting on all the layers in your whole scene so to think to make things a bit um, a bit faster especially the ones that are going to speed up a lot your workflow is the shader effects um, and the modifiers of course but um, just remember that before rendering you should turn them off because this this affect the whole uh, a whole simplification, by the way. Hmm. But now they are enabled, but they don't respect the simplify setting. Should they disrespect the simplify setting, or, or they should be in a separate panel now? Hmm. Should they hinge it? This this makes it look like a hierarchy. So maybe they should. Hmm. Okay. Let's um, let's continue. The um, New brush post processing simplifies. So yeah, you can now uh, you have a post process now when you're uh, drawing that allows you to simplify. So there is here post processing the one that, for example, when you're when you're drawing. And uh, let's uh, let's see when you're drawing. After you're drawing, it's hard to see it, but actually there is. There is some kind of post processing that makes it uh, makes it a bit more smooth. This going to make it more obvious. So, for example, well, this um, there is an option now to simplify, so you can um, make a more um, simple or like low resolution um, stroke after you draw. So that way you save some, uh, for example, if you know that you're not going to see a lot of detail, uh, maybe it's good to apply an automatic simplification at the end of the uh, of your stroke. So you, you end up with less polygons. Remember that these are all um, pretty much, um, these are like polygons, just like if they were 3D. So the more you have them, the slower it's going to run on your computer. And there is also the new set of brush icons. Yay, new brushes. So if you're drawing, you're going to see, uh, sorry, sculpting, drawing. You should see new uh, new brushes. There is also a, oh, the new guides. Yes. So did you know that you can use when you're drawing with grease pencil, you can draw freely or you can also have guides. So you can draw in a like a perfect circle that nobody's gonna believe you that you wrote this <laughs> you made this circle um, so perfect there is also a radial parallel grid so you can actually have a perfect um, grid if you draw up and down or sides now there is a new setting called isometric which allows you to give it a angle and you can for example 45 degrees and you can and draw perfect lines for perspective. So if you're doing some uh, isometric artwork, it's always nice to have this. Maybe not so strong, maybe like there. And then you can have, it's like a very nice, you can do a Picasso if you want to. <laughs> All right, next, um, sculpting. Well, sculpting, got, I, I should make it like an own video for it because it, there's so many, new features added. Uh, Pablo Dovaro has been on fire lately and um, we can uh, go through some of these features but they are better explained in their own um, 
in their own tasks in Fabricator. So if you um, open them, uh, if you go to, for example, this one is the topology auto masking. This one is easier to 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 show. It's um, it's a setting that allows you, for example, if you have a character, um, then in this case you have the monkey. We know that the eyes are separate. They're a separate part of the mesh. If you um, want to do a mask, by default the mask would basically paint anything under the cursor. Now there is a setting, a new setting under the uh, options, yes, under the options of the brush panel where you can turn on topology auto masking. This will, um, when you're when you start painting, it will look for um, whatever is connected to that mesh. So it's easy to paint, for example, a mask of the eyes that we know they're separate or the opposite. Like if we know that we want the um, the masking to auto automatically follow the topology or the shape of your of your mesh. It's a uh, much, uh, much uh, nicer. So I think he uses the same example. Mask expand. Well, actually, there is a bunch of uh, mask operations now that you can do. They are super nice. They're like filters that you can apply to your um, to your mask. So, for example, if you're drawing and you want to make this, but actually a bit bigger, you know, this mask is uh, it's good, but you want to expand it slightly. You can um, go to you can press the A key and you have this pie menu with a bunch of filters for your mask so you can do grow mask it's gonna grow from the edges then there is also a, a smooth mask which will basically do the just make it a bit more softer on the edges and if you want to do the opposite you can do sharpen mask which will apply like a sharpen filter where, every, where the contrast is much higher there is also some contrast uh, operations for decrease and increase there is a shrink so it's the opposite as as growing it will shrink shrink it to the point where it yeah disappears if your the strokes are too thin um, then there is a mask extract operator let's see if we can open it so nice that pablo made demo videos for everything <laughs> uh, make things so much simpler uh, especially if internet was fast enough to open it I think this video is going to take forever to upload. I hope I can make it before Monday, because today is Sunday over here. So, okay. Uh, well, this video is loading for the mask extract. I can talk to you about the Grav Active Vertex. It's a option in the, for example, let's... I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna add a monkey, but I'm gonna have a subdivisions. But I'm not gonna apply the subdivision because I want to have mesh with a modifier, so it looks soft. But actual vertices are somewhere else, like somewhere in space. When you are sculpting, uh, if you use the graph, um, the grab brush, which here the grab brush. Um, you can now, in the options of this um, brush, you can turn on Grab active, active, active Vertex. And as you can see, when I grab, I grab only the Active Vertex, but not only that, now I also have a preview of the mesh underneath. So I can see which one is the Active Vertex that I'm going to grab and the uh, topology around it. That's super nice, super handy. I really like that we haven't seen this something it's like pre-highlighting but even better pre pre everything pre preview <laughs> so all right let's look at the extract the max mask extract it's an operator that makes a mesh out of your mask this is what the, the video that was loading before so it should be in the in the rest of the here should be somewhere here mask extract so if we try it draw a mask press m for for mask and uh, let's apply them here so let's see i want to make this area more of a 
uh, I want to extract it into its own geometry. So I'll, now I can go to Sculpt, Mass Extract, and then Extract. And now I have a new uh, copy of the mesh into a new a separate uh, separate object. And even had some Solidify modifier even by default. That's interesting. Would you want that? Like uh, to have a modifier by default? Because then when you're sculpting, it doesn't have it actually enabled. Eh, I wonder. Um, also, I think the the interface of the, the the menus for sculpting could have some some work because now everything is under one menu called sculpt, where most of the tools belong to. Uh, they're related to masks, so maybe we could have like a mask menu with all these settings. Um, I think that would be make it things a bit easier to to find because who's gonna find the A key uh, under sculpt? Anyway. Uh, also, masking could be something more generic, right? For like uh, painting, for uh, vertex painting, texture painting. So maybe they, it belongs to its own uh, to its own menu. All right. Next tool is the transform tool. So while you're sculpting, let's better open the video from Pablo. And in the meantime, I'm going to show you here. Basically, it behaves the same as the uh, transform tool while you are um, in object mode. But now this one it works in sculpt mode. So when you're moving things here, let's see. So transform tool for the sculpt branch from the sculpt branch. So basically it means that you can start modeling if you say so, like laying out your mesh um, by uh, by being just in, in uh, sculpt mode. So you don't have to go to object mode or I think the next step after this will be able to add objects into um, into sculpt mode that would be amazing because it means that it works with uh, symmetry right so as you're sculpting you're actually sculpting with uh with with symmetry so if you do this then you can do some remeshing and at the same time uh, start deforming your eek your <laughs> your meshes right there from sculpt mode isn't that amazing and there is this also this other feature split original normal into original normal and plain. This is better explained by with uh, Pablo's video because it gives some interesting effects that uh, there might be useful in some cases uh, when you want to have very uh, like removing parts of your mesh. It's more like clay. You're like cutting parts and making things really super flat. Um, it works better with the with the smooth um, fall off, as you can see, the curve fall off. But I, I really like this effect. It's like a high poly, low poly <laughs> kind of a thing. It's very clayish, super nice. And um, by the way, the preview of the curve now is shown here in when you're sculpting. So if you're if you want to uh, like scale the size of your of your brush with like F or with like shift uh, F for the intensity of the brush, you will see that now there is a drawing of the curve of your brush showing up here. So if you have a fall off custom even, so if you if you make a crazy shape, you should be able to see this crazy shape also in this preview. Super nice. All right. Let's continue. And uh, ah yes, the um, pose brush that I shown in the last episode, I believe, um, here for posing basically your models. It's now more complete because it has an icon <laughs> for once, and now also shows a preview of the uh, where the pose is gonna or the brush is gonna start. For example making the transformation. So in this case, I'm grabbing it here by the tip of the, the ears, but it's showing me a preview around here. So it's very smart. Let's see if I can. Nice. I also like the how the fall of the strength now it shows uh, the preview here and you can very nicely 
start tweaking and previewing your transformations. So this works better if it was a character with like uh, the fingers or I bet that Pablo has a much better... Uh, oh, I don't have here the tool, but if you look, if you go to Pablo Dovarro profile, you will see all his patches and all the videos. Or it's just following on Twitter, I think he, he published uh, those all there all the time. All right, let's move on. No more sculpting. There are plenty of new sculpting, um, uh, not tools, but tweaks and improvements added during this week, but I didn't add them to this list because they will be too long. I'm going to make them for the next video. All right, next, modeling. Um, so just a few weeks ago, we only had one remesher in Blender and it was the, the remesh modifier. Very limited. It only had uh, three options, blocks, smooth and sharp. We had this modifier for quite a while for many, many versions. Um, then some like a month ago or a few, two months ago, maybe the uh, OpenVDV remesh was added, the remesh uh, operator. So it's also under the mesh settings or when you are in Sculpt, you can also find it in the top. But it's always available here. You set a, a, a voxel size and it's using, I already mentioned this, it's using a voxel, like a, a box divided in as a grid and it will very quickly remesh your mesh for adding more details, for closing some holes, for um, making it more suitable for sculpting. It's better um, because it's very even everywhere. It adds the same amount of, um, of uh, subdivisions, unless you use a new option for adaptivity, by the way. So this voxel uh, remesh is very nice, but the the mesh itself the, that produces maybe is far from ideal if you want to do like uh, some UV sculpting or for the final, final uh, topology that you want for your mesh. So now there is a new uh, remesher in town. Uh, this remesher is called uh, QuadriFlow. It's actually a library that was added into Blender. It's QuadriFlow Remesher. You can find it in, uh, for example, if you are in object mode, you should search for it. There must be an option here for object. But if you search, I haven't checked where it's in the menu. Ah, maybe we can just basically go in the wiki and you're gonna find it here. Sculpt and Retopology. Remeshing. QuadriFlow Remeshing. And there is no mention where to find it in the user interface. Thank you. <laughs> we need to fix that. We should crowdsource all these, uh, all these changes in the UI and the, like the documentation because otherwise it's gonna get a bit too much to tackle all the changes. So if you search for QuadriFlow Remesh, uh, you're gonna get a pop-up um, where you can tweak the settings. Uh, you can change the. Uh, you can remesh your meshes in ratio, x, x, length. So you can, um, around, like, you can use this as a reference for, okay, how long my edges are going to be. Or if you have a limited amount of faces, for example, if you're doing game, uh, some, some assets for games, you need a, like, okay, I can go over like a thousand or four thousand or ten thousand, uh, faces. So, it's like, okay, I can go over, let's say, 8,000 faces for this model. So I'm going to just use that. Then you can also use the mesh curvature to help you have a, a keep the, 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 the shape a bit better. You can use symmetry. So it should be faster because it only has to calculate half of it. Uh, you can smooth and you have plenty of options here to play with. And of course, a seed if you want to, um, if you want to re... Uh, redo the same remeshing. Once it runs, you're gonna notice that it's way slower than the uh, OpenVDV remesher. It's slower, but the result mesh is actually more... And uh, let's here. You can see it and it's super nice. It has as little, as few poles as possible and everything is quads. Everything, you're not gonna find a single triangle here or you shouldn't but you see it's super nice 
super smooth so for uh, retopologying it is uh, it's gonna be beautiful so it's worth the wait it's slightly slower than voxel remesh so when you're sculpting you're probably gonna be using uh, the voxel remesh or the open btv one um so you can even add it to like the sculpt um quick favorites so you can quickly uh, sculpt and then remesh again and sculpt and remesh and that and so on and so forth but for the final mesh here is, you can see it's all triangles but for the final mesh you can use the uh, quadriflow to try and keep about um, the same shape but with quads instead which are more suitable for remeshing i am sculpting wait object there there what a weird mother art that i made with susan okay let's uh, continue is everything okay <laughs> i'm recording this yes i don't wanna click stop by mistake okay let's continue then oh this is another amazing one for modeling when you're modeling since forever in blender the um only way to have real-time symmetry when you're sculpting was using x-ray so there was a, a setting here for x-ray it was actually called uh, sorry x-ray x x meter so it was called x meter because it was only <laughs> it wasn't meter in x no it was x meter and uh, was only for that um that axis so you were limited to only do things in one axis which was very limiting um but we were used to it and then bam out of a sudden the uh, options for well not of out of a sudden out of a sudden actually the developer worked many hours for this and uh, i think it was mano we carmano i think so thank you for that if, uh, if that's not wasn't you please let me know but there are now uh, the two other axes so y and z are now available so you can let's see a sphere here so i can choose and enable it for the other axis okay here and as you can see it also works the same way so nice nice for asymmetric modeling and now i lost the symmetry so it shouldn't i know i, I still have it in that axis i don't have it in y in x axis anymore so pretty neat yes oh and not only that but it also added for weight painting so this is a game changer because um when you're painting weights and the x-axis for example here is not the same but if i do y-axis it should be wait it should be the same oh there you go z-axis is the top axis ha huh. i was looking at the top but no in blender z is up like it should be no no kidding i don't want to start a, a flame war on that all right awesome so now you can weight paint and should be for vertex paint as well yes so you can now vertex paint in other um here in other oh nice nice awesome amazing let's move on because I still have plenty of things to show and it's a very nice Sunday outside so I wanna go that's the one thing that is nice about Madrid is the weather it's like every day is sunny like what the heck anyway um, shading so in your shading notes you're gonna find a few new a few new notes um, for example let's add here the monkey so there is now a new node oh by the way there is a there is a bug that the wires don't show up which is super strange it, they show up in some cases but not in all of them anyway this is connected to it to this one i think but just the wires are not showing in here so that needs to be fixed it will be fixed of course they oh they're they're back anyway um, there is a new node for vertex color so if you are used to adding vertex color there was a the only way to to use your for example if i use vertex paint here if i paint it oh 
Oh, what did I do here? Okay, I think I messed up my blender. So the uh, let's use a color here. So when using vertex uh, paint, the only way to use this vertex paint in the node editor was by adding a attribute node and manually, yes, manually, 2019, typing the name of the vertex color layer, which was here in the uh, vertex colors. And if you change this to like, like what, like what, then this wouldn't work anymore. And that was far from ideal. So now you can, uh, instead of having to update all your settings, uh, every time all your nodes, every time you change the name of the vertex color, you can now use the new and brand originally named vertex color node. So you can set it once and then if you change it, it's now gonna be... Oh no! Ha! That's a... Let's call it a bug. Hey, I found a bug. Did you know that I made a video about how to report bugs? So I think this should be preserved. Come on. It should be there. Like when you change the name of an of a of a bone, it changes everywhere. So maybe it's an oversight, or maybe yeah, I don't think it by design is like this. All right, so never mind then. You have to pick it again for now, for now. But it's much better to pick it from a list than to uh, type it manually. The same goes for the um, for example for the. Uh, volume for volumes like having to manually type the name of the attribute like density emission or temperature uh, now it's, it's much simpler with this all right shading extend the uh, mass grave node to other dimensions yes uh, this we've seen it already happening in other nodes but now the it's time for the mass grave texture to have this setting for multiple dimensions so into the multiverse of textures add more features to the voto no not okay um compatibility alert if you have your setups with um, botanoid textures they might look different now so that's uh that's something that it, it's been tried to to be super like uh, it's as close as possible to here to the um, to the original uh, effect that had the Voronoi textures because of all the new settings that were added there are uh, there must be some difference especially if you uh, if you have to change some of the like the dimensions or uh, some of the settings down here there might be a difference but uh, yeah there's a the, at the moment when I read this commit there was no way around it but there were uh, uh, versioning changes that were done to convert from the old Voronoi to the new Voronoi but there might be still some differences maybe they fixed it, I'm not sure um, but yes, you can read more in the actual commit here that is D5743 there was a discussion here about the differences the developers have a um, some tests that they run in order to make sure that they look uh, the same for example so the, when compiling when, when running the tests or they are all automatic they check for okay how were the renders of the Voronoi in this case before the change after the change and the result and the difference so that is very very neat that's how they 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 are sure that all the changes are uh, they don't break things or when they have to break that we can make it uh, well break I mean unless you wanted the specific Voronoi pattern to be at that position except uh, instead of uh, five pixels to the right uh, it will be as close as possible it's just not maybe not uh, super perfect all right so yes oh yeah well it removes the following three modes of the of the Voronoi, the cracks, and the F3 and the F4, but because now there's new new settings, so yeah, 
if your viewer is in cracks, then you might have to tweak your, your settings. All right, Eevee, time for Eevee. This is hard to show, but there has been a huge speed up in the volume rendering. So if you had issues with that, if you had issues rendering volumes or were too slow, just try it again because it should be faster now. Then the um, import images as planes add-on, which is amazing, which should be built in into Blender. Um, this add-on now uh, allows you, like it automatically makes transparent up, uh, uh, images into the right transparency setting in Eevee. And okay, let's let's move on to something more more fun. Instead of monkeys, let's have spring here because it's time for cycles updates. Yes, and I adjust my glasses <laughs> to show you this because here let's 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 render this. Got a new laptop. I gotta show it off. This new laptop from uh, from Box from our friends at Box. All right, so let's play with the new setting. So render passes. Now you can choose under the render preview in cycles. Remember the last episode I mentioned that now you can choose, you can change the world and the scene light. You can turn off scene lights and you can change. Uh, to use instead of the scene world, you can also make it use the um, the custom built-in HDRs or your custom ones. So now there is also a new setting called Render Pass, which allows you to see individual passes such as ambient occlusion. This is one of my favorites. Ambient occlusion always looks nice. Um, or you can also see, for example, the normals. The, or the ones that you might want to see more often, for example, are the diffuse. So you can clearly see what are the diffuse colors that you're going to play with. In this case, the face is not very um, colorful because the pass that you want to see here is the soft surface. Um, for example, to try and test if your soft surface is too noisy or how many samples do you need it to be uh, in order to clear up. And it is very useful when you're setting up your render using, for example, um, uh, branch path tracing for uh, rendering. So that way you can uh, you can make it so you give it more samples only to the subsurface scattering or to the amino occlusion or any other pass. You also have the emission pass, which um, in this case nothing is really emitting here much except the background but in the um, uh, in some uh, shots where you use a lot of uh, internal lights or like screens for computers it's very handy to have so very nice addition I really like this feature was added by Jeroen Bakker so thank you Jeroen um, initial support for local view yes now you can in cycles you can uh, have an object, for example, to select an object and go into local view with the same shortcut that you would do in um, in Blender 2.7, the slash. In this case, I didn't choose any images, any sorry, any lights. So I should choose some lights at least. Uh, let's see where are my lights in this blend file. So lighting. So let's choose um, some lights. Let's shift click. Well, let's choose all of the lights all of the lights and then I'm gonna choose for example spring and then slash and I should get yes the mesh yeek not creepy at all oh because I didn't select the eyes tan 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 okay not creepy at all let's uh <laughs> <laughs> it's floating in space. So this is very handy when you have a big scene and you want to work only on one object or preview one object. This works in uh, in the other modes, of course, as well, when you are in solid and you want to like tweak the model down here without having all the other objects. This is uh, this was available in 2.7 or 2.65 for, for ages. But now it works as well with, um, with cycles. And in 2.7, in Blender internal, you didn't need to have the lamps selected. The lamps, the light will always affect those objects. 
in this case it's not you have to select the lamps in before you go into uh, into local mode ideally in the future there will be an option there was a discussion here that maybe there could be like a, an option in the um, in the outliner a column where you could choose okay these objects are gonna go into local view and so instead of going out in and out you could from here just basically like click 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 and add those into their local mode and last but not least I'm actually showing it off here and when I was showing the um, the let, let's see let's zoom in in a very nice part here and the rendering is actually very fast and I don't know if the video is still playing fine yeah because I only have one GPU in this computer uh, it's a laptop of course um, but it's a pretty good one it's a Quadro RTX 4000 and it's RTX so it means that now I can use optics so optics is a different backend it's, a, it's a similar to what CUDA does that it takes better um, it, it makes use of your of your graphics card much better in this case for NVIDIA graphics card and the, if you have a, an RTX you can use optics it's similar to what you would get in uh, CUDA it's faster in some cases but on, not in all of cases and there are some features that are not yet implemented but it's yeah if you have an RTX graphics card go and, and use it because in most cases it's a it's a it's a nice speed up for free really you don't have to do anything just select it him from the list so pretty nice oh by the way you have to use the latest drivers or, or have the optics backend especially if you compile um, but that's it in um, on Linux I only install like like from the website like install optics and Viewport rendering me memory improvement. So yes, there has been improvements. I don't remember the details on those, but the uh, memory usage in the viewport should be uh, much better now. But I, I don't know why I wrote it here without a link. I always try, ah, there is also the link in the, well, that render looks pretty clear. And it's 500 samples or so. Wow, nice. Um, so, okay. Let's open here. Remember that on the website, on blender.org, on the wiki, there are the work in progress fixes for each one of the sections. In this case, there is the um, cycles section. And you can see here the render times. In blue is the um, regular CPU rendering, which is pretty good in this case. It's an Intel Xeon. Then there is in, in gray is the CUDA, which is we know much faster when it fits on your memory <laughs> and there is optics so it's slightly faster in some cases for example Koro is the llama from Caminandes is pure hair it's just a lot of hair and that is not greatly optimized for optics so you get a speed up so it's always welcome but it's not as big as for example the Barcelona pavilion which is a um, which is a if you don't remember the image is a architectural image with a lot of uh, diffuse and glossy and uh, it's just a typical case where you were gonna use the optics and you get like half the render time for free so that is amazing like you don't have to do anything you just choose it from the settings bam you get a faster render time so pretty amazing um, but yeah you don't get it's, it's not fair to say like half the render time because it no, as you can see it doesn't apply to all of the all of the cases um, then uh, here you can see all the other settings that I already mentioned uh, all the new improvements and there should be I was looking for the one with memory optimization but I think it's not listed over here I think mm, no all right, let's continue. B, uh, yes, video sequencer prefetching. So we go from cycles to a completely different world. The world of video editing within Blender. Yes. So for example, let's say I'm gonna add a um, gonna add a video. Let's see. Uh, I have the videos of this recording, so let's do it very meta. <laughs> and uh, I have. For example, let's add a video 
uh, not the one I'm recording right now, but as you can see here, uh, it was when I was testing it. So as you can see here at the bottom, you see this line over here. This is the cache. So when you click on a frame, it's going to cache that frame. It's not going to start caching everything by default, but it caches it when, you, when you're like uh, playing it back. It caches it as soon as uh, as much as possible, but if you uh, have the memory available, you can prefetch those frames by um, enabling them in the um, view settings of the previous section up here, and you click on prefetch frames. And as you can see, when I click, for example, if I when I click on this frame over here, you're gonna see the here the line filling it this space bam so now when I play back it's already it's already there so what I was doing in this I don't know <laughs> this video but yes uh, so you can see now it plays back and if you do a change for example like now I add another video the cache will start filling it again and again as much as possible so it should be and now I'm getting 30 FPS, so pretty nice. Yes, prefetching, yay! Um, there is also, if you want to read more about it, how it works, um, there should be new, there should be an explanation here um, in more features, I think. This should be in the sequencer. It belongs in its own. Oh, no internet! Yay, I can play. <laughs> anyway. This is how bad the internet is in this place. This is why I, I haven't been doing live stream. Um, so yeah, if you look at the um, the task D5386, you're gonna read more about it because it, it tells you how uh, how in which case it's gonna start doing the prefetching. Uh, for example, it's not gonna prefetch backwards. It's only gonna prefetch from when you click onwards, and then uh, only when it's fast enough. Or like only when you leave it and you leave it intact and it you give it time to prefetch. So if it's not fast enough, it's not gonna do it. Uh, try to be a bit smart about it, to not filling all your memory immediately. And last but not least is the library overrides, which I was hoping to show you, <laughs> but it's a new system. We've been talking about this for. Ever library of library overrides are something that is greatly missed since forever in Blender. So, so library overrides are basically the proxy system in 2.7 where you link in a character and you can make a proxy of the armature to animate it to make a to go into post mode and start animating. In um, so I think I can't connect. There, I'm back. Let's see, because this is better explained here. It has a bit of an explanation on how to do it and the edit, like the, um, the basic editing of a library override. But don't get too excited yet. This is an experimental feature. Um, making the full switch from the current proxy system to the new one could break um, the workflow for a lot of people and it needs a lot of testing, you know, linking libraries is not an easy, uh, simple thing. You have to take care of all kinds of uh, references to files, to uh, data blocks, to um, so many things, relations between armatures, objects, modifiers. Uh, it's, it's insane. So it's currently considered as experimental it's on by default so you can if you're downloading now uh, the current blender and you have a library um i don't have any any uh, any file that i can show you here with the libraries but you're gonna find there is a new uh, button there's not images here but there is a new button uh, where you can make library overrides it's a link icon here next to the name of the objects where you can make an override of that data block. Remember, it's on a data block level, so you can do it for materials, you can do it for objects, for meshes. So here in the same place where you see the shield icon, you're going to find also a linked icon, which you can 
uh, click to make local just like you can do right now but you can also shift click you can you, you should read the, the tooltip uh, to make a library override you can read more about how to use it over here and if the library overrides that they if people report many uh, bugs or issues and they don't get fixed on time they might be disabled uh, for 2.81 and then enabled again for 2.82 to have the whole uh, the whole process of like the development um, to fix those things to find the issues. So it's up to you if you want library overrides. Mainly up to you, not not all, totally up to you, of course. But if you want library overrides, let's test them. Let's uh, use them. They're on by default right here, how to use them, how to change those, um, the, the workflow into the new one. Uh, let's let's try to polish this workflow so they make it to 2.81 and uh, everybody can use it. Otherwise, they're going to be uh, disabled. Um, so, yeah, maybe I should make a dedicated video about it once I'm back in Amsterdam because they are super important and it's it's a, such, a, such a pity that we don't have a, a proper library override system in Blender yet. Well, we have now, but we have to, to test it, right? We don't want to, uh, you know, deliver, deploy a, a system that is not fully tested. And all right, let's move on. We are uh, pretty much at the, end, at the end. There's a SVG import fixes um, when importing SVG. Then there should be an, a fix also in when you're importing SVG document. The units now match the Blender units. Nice. And a GLTF exporter got a huge, huge performance speed up when importing, uh, when exporting sample animations, using sample animations. So uh, if you had issues with that, check it out. And then I think I'm already at the end. Yes, I'm already reaching the previous episode. It's just a, a bunch of fixes uh, regarding the depth graph because we never talk enough about the depth graph. We always um, go through like, yeah, the under the hood, nobody's going to care. But there were there was a uh, um, uh, how do you call it? Well, it was a bug or a to do that it was very important for Addons that change the data of the mesh, for example, dynamically, such as flip fluids or animation nodes. Those are the two big examples where the that were having a, a big um, uh, a big issue because they were not working properly with 2.80 until now. This has been fixed. The um, developer working on the depth graph, Sergey Sharavin, has been breaking his brain into pieces to put it all together and re-implement the Python handlers properly to um, introduce a lot of uh, tools for um, for checking how performance could be affected and this should all be fixed right now with more performance tweaks. So thank you Sergey for you know for taking the time to do this to make Blender better for everybody. All right, I think I am reaching the end and I've been talking for over one hour and then there was no questions. What the heck? All right, <laughs> cool. All right, let's call it a day. Thank you for staying here until the end. The next episode hopefully will have less feature, hopefully in the sense that um, I'm going to not take so long that we're going to have less features and more focus on making it more stable, which has been pretty stable for me, actually. I've been using Blender now daily, hardcore, uh, for um, for the last two weeks and uh, still have two more weeks. And uh, yeah, it, took, it takes a bit of too much uh, time from like doing this kind of uh, the video updates, but I'm going to find the time um, to, to continue doing this. Uh, hopefully I will be able to make one another one next week. Uh, maybe more focused towards the Q&A because uh, Blender is now reaching to the 281, is like reaching to the point where there is only like minor uh, tweaks and updates to the already available features, but it's more focused on uh, fixing improvements um, or like performance issues and so on and so forth. So 
leave your questions here at the bottom of the here in the comments below here on youtube so maybe that also helps the algorithm to pump this video to boost it in the recommendations and you can also give a, a, a like to the questions that you want the most answered they're going to be on the top and all right let's uh, let, let's do it again next week maybe not the uh, uh, same time but sometime um, maybe you can click on the notifications uh, subscribe and click on click on the bell icon that will give you a notification uh, most of the times when i upload a new video here on this channel which only contains this kind of content except next month actually it's going to have the blender conference which is also amazing content but maybe it's too many notifications for you so maybe don't click the bell icon if you don't want to be notified about everything <laughs> Alrighty, thank you once again. Thank you once again for staying until the end. I had a great time. I hope you too. And I'll see you again sometime next week uh, for another Blender Today. See you soon. I miss you. And uh, see you, see you, see you very, very soon. Bye bye. Ding, 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 ding.